Hi, my name is Mark Nonham, and I'm a professional Scrum trainer with Scrum.org, and I work for the Madison Henry Group. Today I'd like to talk about uh, agile metrics a little bit, just to different categories of metrics we should be thinking about as we go about trying to measure the uh, impact of agile practices on our organization. So let me share a little very simple model uh, that we can use to think about different type of metrics. Of course, we're doing development. That's the nature of Scrum. We're developing something new, solving complex problems. And out of development, we produce outputs of various kinds. And um, those outputs are leaving development and then have the opportunity to affect users and customers. And we want to call those outcomes. And we've been talking for a while about differentiating between just outputs and outcomes. But this model adds a little bit of a twist. Outcomes affect users and customers, and those outcomes impact the organization. And so we'd like to differentiate between outcomes and impacts. And of course, impacts are very important because we need to generate the money to pay for development and to pay to produce these outputs. So let's look at a couple of examples of these types of metrics. Of course, classic development type metric might be on budget or on schedule. All we're measuring is uh, are we following the plan or on plan? That's not necessarily an agile perspective, but a very classic metric that is only measuring development. Uh, another metric that's common, particularly in Scrum, would be the team's velocity. Now the question is, what kind of metric is that? Well, if the team's definition of done includes deploying to production, then that's actually a measure of output because the team is actually deploying the software out into the marketplace. If the definition of done doesn't quite include that yet and stops short of deployment into production, then velocity is only measuring development because we'll have to do more work before we can get from development into outputs. Uh, examples of outcomes could be things that affect, will be things that affect users and customers. For example, uh, if we let production defects slip into the production environment, that's an outcome, it's a negative outcome. Nevertheless, it affects users and customers, and it's something that we probably wanna be very thoughtful of. Another, a different kind of an outcome, though, could be some new feature or capability that increases customers' willingness to refer our products and services to others, uh, often measured by a, a metric like net promoter score. And of course, that's a po that could be a positive outcome if we uh, have value-added features. And finally, if we can get those customers that are willing to refer us to others to actually refer others to us and we get new customers, that impacts the organization. Now we have the opportunity for more revenue, hopefully more profit, um, and in even being able to get employees which are really engaged in the organization to develop these valuable things, get them out into the marketplace so we can affect users and customers, so we can provide even more impact to the organization. So again, a simple model for thinking about different kinds of metrics so that we don't get stuck only measuring development and outputs, but we also measure our outcomes and our impacts. So this is Mark Nonham. If you have more questions on Agile metrics, you can go to the scrum.org website or visit me on madisonhenry.com.